What's up everyone? This is a more recent session that I played about a month ago. It was a 5-10 game played Friday night at Champions. It quickly divulged into pure chaos as it became a 10-20 plus game that we played until about 5-30 in the morning. It starts off pretty tame and it gets a little bit wild. So this is the first part of the session. I had a lot of hands that I played throughout this very long session. The second session is definitely a little bit more exciting as the pots are bigger. I actually end up playing the biggest pot of my life. So I hope that you guys enjoy this first part of the session and the second part will be released soon. Session starts off with an early position to $35 from Matt. I look down at King Queen offsuit in middle position and I three bet $200. This is a hand that doesn't play particularly well multi-way. I'd prefer to get it heads up and I definitely think that Matt is opening up a wide enough range that this combo is ahead of the vast majority of his range. It folds around to him, he makes the call, we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $225. The flop is the ace of diamonds, five of hearts, three of diamonds. This is a board that I'm going to be c-betting a small size at a relatively high frequency. I block the top of Matt's range, his ace-king, ace-queen combos, although most of his ace-king combos are going to be four betting. I also have two overs to the vast majority of his range, so if I do hit a king or a queen, I often have the best hand. I can also pick up a straight draw. I continue for $75. He makes the call. I think he's going to be calling all of his pairs here, all of his flush draws here, and a lot of his decent back door, so if he has something like queen jack of hearts. The turn is the queen of diamonds giving me a pair. I'm now ahead of all of his pocket pairs, but I'm behind quite a bit against his ace x and his made flushes. He checks again. I think I have a pretty clear check back here now that I have showdown value. We go to the river with the pot at $375. The river is the four of spades. Really doesn't change much unless he specifically has something like pocket fours or pocket deuces. I'm not sure he's opening those hands from early position and calling a three bet though. Ace deuce makes a straight, but that was already ahead of me. He decides to pro bet here pretty large with a size of $175. I think this is a pretty polarizing bet on this board texture as a lot of my ace x combos are going to be checking back the turn when the flush comes in. So I still have a lot of strong top pair combos, some two pair combos, as well as a couple flushes in my range. So I don't expect him to be betting too many of his medium strength ace x combos or anything worse. So his value range really consists of flushes here and possibly a stronger ace x with the diamond. I don't think he has too many offsuit ace x combos so I think this is slightly less likely as well. I think that he is fully capable of turning smaller pocket pairs into a bluff here. Something like sixes, sevens, eights, nines trying to push me off of weaker top pair combos, something like kings, jacks, queen x. So I do decide to make the hero call, and thankfully we are good this time as he shows pocket sixes. The next hand of the session, we see an early position open to $35 from the golfer, a reg calls in the hijack, and I have pocket aces on the button. I three bet to $120. The early position player decides to call, and surprisingly, the hijack player decides to shove all in for $1,245. Pretty massive shove. Pretty weird play for him to be doing, especially when he flats the early position raise. I think he's going to have a lot of weaker pocket pairs here and some number of stronger Broadway, something like maybe like an ace 10, ace jack. Obviously, I'm pretty thrilled with this. It's an absolute gift to see someone shove in front of you when you're holding pocket aces. I have a very clear continue here. I think my hand can play as a re-raise or a flat. I decide to re-raise here. I think I'm going to be re-raising mostly with hands like ace-king and some of my weaker pocket pairs trying to get the early position player to fold. So I think it's good to balance with pocket aces. The early position player folds and we run out five cards in this $2,600 pot. The flop is the five of spades, nine of hearts, four of diamonds. The turn is the king of hearts and the river is the jack of hearts. Unfortunately, our opponent shows the king jack of diamonds. He said that he thought I was making a move, which is fair. I three bet very frequently. We have him drawing almost dead on the flop, and unfortunately, he hits runner runner two pair and cracks our pocket aces. In this hand, I open up pocket nines in the hijack to $40. Will on the button three bets to 125 Will is a very solid regular. He's on the aggressive side. I expect him to be 3-betting here a pretty high frequency. 
Regardless, I think I have a pretty pure continue against any reasonable three betting range. So I make the call. We go heads up to the flop with the pot at $275. The flop is the queen of hearts, two of spades, four of hearts. Not my favorite flop as I'm definitely trying to avoid the ace, king, and queen on the flop as my opponent's offsuit combos are going to contain those cards the most often. But still a reasonable flop. I have a pretty strong pair which is still ahead of a lot of his range. I have the backdoor flush here. I check and my opponent bets $100. I think he's going to be mostly using small sizes here and I think that I have a peer continue especially with the backdoor flush. Make the call. The turn is the seven of spades. Really doesn't change much. I check and he uses a pretty large sizing here which I think he is supposed to do the vast majority of the time. Pretty difficult spot now. I think I definitely can find the fold here. He's still going to be barreling some of his broadways, some of his ace-x combos like ace-5, ace-3. Obviously there's two flush draws out here as well. I'm blocking both of those flush draws which at this point isn't quite as nice. But I don't expect too many of his flush draws to be containing a 9. And because he is on the aggressive side, I do decide to continue here one more time. We go to the river with the pot at $1,225. The river is the two of hearts. Pretty interesting card. Obviously the flush comes in which is one of the main draws that's possible here but I think that it really reduces the value to a lot of his over pairs, his ace queen, king queen style of combos. I check here and he goes a pretty polarizing size betting $700 into 1225. Not necessarily a massive sizing but in a three bet pot it's definitely on the larger size. At the time I really didn't expect him to be triple barreling here too much with aces, kings, ace, queen without a heart although I think that it's definitely reasonable but blocking some of the flushes that could have got here something like the ace 9, 10, 9, 9, 8 I think that I have a reasonable bluff catcher and ultimately I did decide to make the hero call. Unfortunately my opponent does have pocket aces without the heart so he definitely went for max value here. No fear of me having the flush and unfortunately I lose this 2.6k pot. In this hand there is a $20 straddle. The comic king opens it from early position to $55. I decide to flat ace 10 off in the cutoff. I really don't like this play. I'm not really sure why I flatted. This hand plays very similar to the king queen offsuit that I played in the first hand of the session. Just a hand that doesn't really want to be flatting here because if we go multi-way it doesn't play particularly well. I think this is probably just going to be a fold the vast majority of the time versus an early position raise. And just like we didn't want to see both the small blind and the big blind decide to call behind and we go four ways to a flop with the pot at $265. The flop is the 10 of spades, two of hearts, king of clubs, giving me middle pair with the ace kicker. It checks to early position and he decides to C bet $125 here. Not a super comfortable spot with my hand. I think I probably want to be calling once. I have a pretty strong value hand still and I don't really block too many of the bluffs. Obviously I block ace queen and ace jack but I think it's definitely reasonable for me to fold my hand here as well with two players behind and the early position player that has a stronger range betting into four players but I do make the call both the small blind and the big blind fold and we go heads up to the turn which is the six of hearts which is an absolute blank. The early position player decides to barrel again here for a pretty large sizing betting $340. I think for a little bit and decide to call again. Still really not blocking any of the bluffs here especially not blocking any of the backdoor draws that have come in. But when my opponent decides to barrel here I think this is a point where I definitely should be folding a pretty high frequency. I have a lot of king x combos here that can continue as well as some stronger hands that are trapping like king 10 and pocket deuces. We go to the river which is the four of spades and my opponent decides to triple barrel with a small size of $410 into this $1200 pot. Often these small sizes are going to be indicative of more value heavy hands but I think that my opponent is definitely capable of bluffing here. Kind of a weird spot for me as I'm getting a very good price. I'm not sure if my opponent is triple barreling here with some of his weaker king x combos. I do block a little bit of his value blocking pocket tens, king 10, aces and ace king and I have a reasonable bluff catcher as well on blocking hands like queen jack, queen 9, jack 9 although I'm not sure how many of those he is opening from early position and triple barreling here. 
I've been a hero all night and I've decided to continue that trend and I make the call and unfortunately we get shown the goods again as my opponent flips up ace king offsuit and they scoop this 2k pot. At this point in the night, there's been a lot of action. Everyone's been pretty active. Stacks are pretty deep and it's a Friday night, so there's no school tomorrow. So we decide to bump up the game to 1020 and the pots from here on out get a little bit wild. So in this hand, we see an early position open from Will to $60 and as is customary in a lot of hands in Houston, we see a call from literally everybody at the table. I look down at six, seven of hearts in the big blind and I'm getting an amazing price. So I decide to continue here. We go six ways to the flop with the pot at $360. The flop is the six of diamonds, two of spades, seven of spades, giving me top two pair. Generally going to be checking to the preflop aggressor, but I think that in some of these middling slash low connected boards as the out of position player, especially multi-way, I'm going to have a low frequency of leads. I think that this is a very strong hand to be leading here and I expect to get a decent amount of value with this many players and my hand, although it's very strong, does gain quite a bit of value from denial and charging those flush draws and straight draw combos as well as possibly something like an over pair that can hit a deuce or some hand like ace deuce that can improve to a better two pair. I decide to donk bet here for $250. Pretty large sizing giving the wet board texture here. The initial raiser will decides to make the call and it folds around to the small blind who also elects to make the call. We go three ways to the turn with the pod at $1,100. The turn is the 10 of diamonds. Overall, pretty good turn card for me. Shouldn't really improve too many two pair combos or sets that my opponent could have. The only obvious draw is the 9-8 open ender. Unfortunately, things get scary real quick when the small blind player decides to donk shove for $1,200. Pretty horrendous spot for me. I think that I'm pretty much always ahead of the early position player unless they have exactly pocket tens. I would have expected pocket sevens or pocket sixes to be raised by them. I guess they could also have the nine eight straight, but I think they have a lot of flush draws here and a lot of over pairs. But overall, this pot size donk is pretty strong here. My opponent could also be doing this with pocket deuces, which I'm behind. Overall, I don't think my opponent is bluffing too much. I think it's definitely possible for me to find the fold as I'm drawing very thin versus the made straight. But with two flush draws out here and this pretty connected board, I do decide to make the call. The early position player folds and we see a river, which is the eight of spades. Obviously not one of the rivers I wanted to see. It didn't end up mattering as my opponent did have the 9-8 combo and they turned to the straight and I was drawing to only another four outs hoping to hit the seven or the six on the river and my opponent scoops this 3.5k pot. In this hand, we're gonna tangle with the Comic King once again. This time he opens up in the low jack to $75. I have ace jack of clubs in the hijack and I think I'm pretty far ahead of his range, especially when he's opening from middle to late position. I three bet to $225 and things get a little scarier when he decides to four bet to $650. I think my hand here in position is going to be a pure continue. I'm going to be folding a lot of my offsuit combos here. I'm going to have a lot of worse suited ASEX combos, some pocket pairs that can fold here. But I think that this hand is just too good. We go to the flop with the pot at $1,335. The flop is jack high with the eight of diamonds, jack of hearts, four of clubs, giving me top pair, top kicker, and the backdoor flush. At this point, not really planning on folding. My opponent tries to make it extremely difficult on me as they decide to shove all in for my remaining $1,350. I make the call. The turn is the jack of spades, really solidifying my chances of winning against a lot of the over pairs. And the river is the two of hearts. The turns jack was comforting, but it didn't actually matter as my opponent has a suited connected combo that was a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw on the flop. And I scooped this 4K pot with trip jacks. So it looks like I did lie a little bit earlier. We are actually playing 5, 10, 20, and we see a slight misclick in this hand as the golfer opens it up to $40 versus the $20 straddle, not realizing that the straddle was in play. 
The Comic King in the big blind makes the call and I have a pretty easy check back with the Jack Five of Diamonds. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $120. The flop is the King of Hearts, Nine of Hearts, Six of Hearts. At this point, we're pretty much just done with our hand. Hoping to check it down and hit a Jack or a Five, but probably just going to be folding versus any aggression. Thankfully for me, it does decide to check around. I think it's reasonable for me to take a stab here, but for the most part, just trying to get to showdown and not put too much more money in this pot. The turn is a fourth heart, the four of hearts, and it once again checks around to me. At this point, I think it's very unlikely that my opponents have a strong flush here. I would have expected either one of them to be betting the flop, and if not the flop, then betting the turn. I think it's reasonable that I check back a fair number of flush combos on the flop. So at this point, with both my opponents showing no interest in the pot, I'm going to try to steal it. I haven't gotten completely out of line tonight, so now is my moment. I bet $50 into this $120 pot, and very surprisingly, both the small blind player and the big blind player elects to call. At this point, I think that it is possible that they have a weaker flush. I think if they have something like a king x or nine x combo, they might be calling once. Regardless, I still think I have a pretty strong range advantage here. We go three ways to the river, which brings the fifth heart, this time the ace of hearts. Ruining my story slightly as I can no longer have the ace of hearts, but I think it's still very feasible that I have a queen of heart, jack of heart, ten of heart combo. It checks to me again, and I try to really represent one of the stronger flushes and decide to overbet into both of them with a size of $450. At this point, I'm really only representing something like the Queen of Hearts and maybe the Jack of Hearts, but really just trying to apply pressure on any of those really weak flushes and definitely trying to push out anything weaker than that as pretty sure that my Jack High doesn't play against both players. The small blind player quickly folds and the big blind player tanks for a long time before ultimately making the call. He said it is a horrendous run out for his hand and he was correct as he ends up having the seven deuce of hearts for the flopped flush, which kind of makes some sense. He has a weaker flush, maybe he's planning on check raising or just having both of us put money in on the flop. And then when he sees the turn, his very, very strong value hand becomes very medium strength. And then obviously he's not loving it on the river. So very good call by my opponent here. I think with two hearts, it definitely reduces the number of heart combos that I do have in general. And I think it's a reasonable call, especially versus me when I like to blast off quite a bit here. So the Comic King scoops this $1,200 pot. Unfortunately, the session hasn't gone particularly well at this point. I'm stuck quite a bit, but the stakes have been bumped up and there's gonna be some massive pots coming up here soon. So hopefully I can turn it around. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the first part of the session. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I really appreciate the support and I will see you guys very shortly for the second part.